Hello and welcome to another video about video cameras and video camera recording. Uh, in the previous video, I put a couple of cameras, new cameras down at my gate, an AI Pro facing one direction and AI Theta from Ubiquiti facing the other direction. Uh, and we hooked those up into the Ubiquiti's Protect ecosystem. Uh, and in this video, we're gonna walk down to the gate and we're gonna replace one of those cameras with another AI Pro facing toward the gate which will have a little better zoom, which will help with the uh, plate recognition. And then we're gonna take a look at uh, Ubiquiti's new Protect 5.0, which has a couple of cool features, one of which will be super helpful for my infrastructure. Um, and so we'll take a look and see what's awesome in that new release. Let's get to it. So here we are at the gate. We're gonna make a few changes. I removed the old cameras that were up here, which were these old Hikvision cameras. They've been here since that's probably 2018, 2019, and so they've worked well. Uh, but they're really old, and the firmware on those doesn't do on VIFs, so it won't work with the uh, Protect solution, and they're pretty old. Uh, and anyways, I have an AI Pro in here now facing backwards, and then I have this uh, AI Theta facing forward. Uh, several people mentioned that the AI Theta is not an outdoor camera. That is, in fact, true, uh, and that's why I have its cable going through a little sealed gland here. And this camera, I have it inserted into a tube that's sealed in the back, and then there's actually sealant on the inside of that ring there as well to make it just slightly more outdoor uh, capable. But I'm going to change it out because the field of view of the camera on the AI Theta is really, really wide, um, which is nice, but for the plate recognition, it's good to have it be a little bit narrower. So I'm going to take this out and use this in my shop. Now I'm going to replace this with an AI Pro camera uh, aimed in the gate and zoomed a little bit more. Well, I've uh, finished swapping out the AI Theta. I now have an AI Pro pointed at the gate. That seems to work pretty well. I got it set up with a good zoom. And then there's a second AI Pro facing down the driveway that way. And they're both set up and streaming into AI Protect. So let's go take a look at the new version of AI Protect. So let's take a look at Protect 5.0, the newest version of Protect from Ubiquity, which went into wide release today. Undoubtedly, the most anticipated feature of this release is the support for OnVIF cameras, which are non-Ubiquity cameras that support the OnVIF configuration. Uh, and I've been running this for about a week now, and I had a bunch of cameras already installed in my house that were connected to a Blue Iris server uh, that were non-Ubiquity cameras. And when I installed the new release, they actually just showed up in the interface directly. I didn't have to do anything other than click on each one and enter the username and password from the camera. It would then adopt the camera and get started recording. It was very easy to do. The only camera that was a little bit different was the Axis camera, and I have a few others that aren't on here. And those ones, I had to log into the camera because they have a different password for the logging into the camera as for the OnVIF configuration. So it has a dedicated OnVIF username and password, which I set and then entered into the Ubiquiti software, and the camera popped up, and away it went. So it was extremely easy to do if you were to install a new camera and it were to get an address from DCP, it'll show up on here. And you can click it, hit adopt, and the camera will be online. So it really is very, very, very easy to use and requires no configuration or understanding RTSP or roles or any of that kind of stuff. So very, very easy to use. In the last few weeks, using the Ubiquiti software with the Ubiquiti cameras and now with the non-Ubiquiti cameras, the recording has been seamless. It does have some detection capabilities. So let's take a look here. Like here is detection of animals, which are a lot of near my house, some coyotes and deer. I think there was a video here, a nice one from some elk that wandered in. There were three of them that were very nice, very large, very large animals. Uh, so that part works very, very well. It has, of course, vehicle detection and plate detection. When you're in the vehicle, you could pick by like color and see what color cars you want to filter by. Uh, and it also has plate detection depending on where the camera's positioned. That's one of the reasons why we added the new AI Pro camera down at the gate pointing out, because it'll be a little better for uh, plate detection. But all of those uh, detection algorithms seem to work really well. Um, the speed 
of which it detects and notifies is really, really good. If I'm driving past the gate, of course, there's a camera facing there, and I can barely get past the pole that's just maybe 30 feet in before my phone gets a pop-up showing my car coming through the gate. So it's really, really fast in the time from vehicle detection to notification. So it happens way before they would ever even get to my house. Um, and that's true with all of the notifications. So, um, which is a nice thing that there's a very low latency between the time it does the detection and when you see it. Other than that, there are some other enhancements in version 5.0. I think if you look at the front screen, you can see I'm at pretty close to my camera capacity. And this is currently running on my UDM Pro Max firewall. And so the next step, of course, is to get the dedicated NVR version from Ubiquity and switch it over to that, which will both give it more capacity for cameras uh, as well as more storage capacity. So if you have just a few cameras, running it on the firewall, I think, is a great solution, easy to do and requires no additional hardware. If you have a lot of cameras, and I'm probably gonna have 40, 45 cameras total, uh, it's worthwhile to get the NVR dedicated version, which is what we'll do. But other than that, it's with everything Ubiquity, the interface is extremely easy to use. You can use it from your phone or from the uh, uh, web app directly. The recording is easy to configure. And fundamentally, it just works. It required very little effort for me to switch to it from Blue Iris both on seeing notifications and on being able to pop it up to look at a camera. Um, it does support things like if you have cameras that have P to Z, um, it does support directly being able to move those cameras, change the zoom, et cetera. Um, and, and all of that works seamlessly just as you'd expect. Um, it just is a really, really easy system to use. And I think that Ubiquity adding the OnViv camera support makes it possible to switch into Protect even if you already have other cameras. I think that's an important thing. There are occasionally maybe a need for a camera in a location where you want a very inexpensive camera, and there are lots of really inexpensive OnViv compatible cameras. And so being able to integrate those into the NVR solution makes it fundamentally much easier to switch to from other solutions. And so I'm gonna stick with this for a while. I'm gonna try out the new NVR, a bigger one, and add in some more cameras, and I'll let you know how it goes and if I have any problems. But so far it has been an extremely seamless uh, switchover, which is always good. So we'll talk about that more later, I'm sure. Thanks for now.